Okay, good evening guys and girls. Sunday Night Rant, coming to you on Facebook, Instagram. Let's wait for this audience to build up. I am back in Sydney after having a couple of weeks vacation. Good greetings, greetings to you all. Today we have a business rant. Good to see you. Everyone coming up on Insta, thank you so much. We're just waiting for this audience to build up on Facebook. Hello, hello Sandy on Facebook. Billy, hello on Insta. Mm. Ah, enjoying my water as usual. Grant Whisker, how you going? Good to see you, gang. Hello, Mar Marcel from the UK. Uh, let's get this audience going up. Beautiful Stevie Ritka, how you going? Luke St. Clair's joining from New York. I think he's in America somewhere at the moment. Mr. Neagle, how you going? Paul, how are you? Good to see you. Menzies on. Great. Got an audience happening. Emil Jurassic, fantastic. The video Facebook man of real estate in 2018. Extraordinary stuff what he's doing. Peter Diamindis, good to see you, brother. Fantastic. Nick Menzies, hope you're enjoying your new life in uh, Blacktown. Kate, how you going? Good stuff. Yogi, Mickey Demian, how you going? Jay Lee, how are you? All right, gang, let's get the show on the road. Tonight, my friends, it is a business rant and we are going to be focusing on predominantly real estate applicable to everyone but I'm going to run through eight things that I think are going to help you have the most important three months of your real estate life. Hello Shane, how you going? Ben Horitz, how you going? Marie Manos, how are you? Good to be back, Mickey. Why do I think it's important? Because I'm telling you, August, September, October, they're the three months... Big months in real estate, big months. Winter's coming to an end, not long to go. School holidays are over. We got a clear run to start listing your spring stock and then to sell your spring stock. Hello, Chrissy. Hey, everyone. All righty, gang. Let's get the show on the road. But before we move on, before we move on, I met someone today that told me that they have had two divorces in five years and get ready for it, they are getting married again. Which got me thinking, hello Nick Cooney, how you going? Got me thinking, like two divorces in five years and get married again. And I sort of said to him, man, can I just ask you, like what have been the learnings out of the two times? And that's a short period of time. And he said to me, look, it's not a case of learning. It just, you know, it just didn't feel right. And I'm not going to fucking fuck around. So here's my view about not feeling right, right? Here's my view about feeling right. Actually, you know what I'm going to tell you? I'm going to tell you about a movie that I remember watching. Now, I'm just trying to remember how did it... Okay. So this may or may not be a true story. This may not or be, but it is in a movie I watched it. And I just want you to picture what's actually happened. There's a guy, right? He's married. And he's been married for a few years. And what's happened is he's been having an affair, right? He's been having an affair and he's in love with the mistress. And the way that the show sort of is, you know... Uh, <laughs> coming in now, it's focused on, he's made the decision, he tells his mistress that I'm going to tell my wife that it's over. So what actually happens is he organises to meet his wife at a cafe. And what actually happens is that his wife and him are meeting at the cafe. She's got no idea about what's about to happen, right? So they make this appointment and what happens is he's there, meets her up, and then as he's about, as he's about to tell his wife, he is ending the marriage. She says, I have something to say to you. I have cancer. I have six months to live. And this totally throws him because what happens is that he intention of breaking up gets thrown totally derailed 
So what he does is he says to himself, um, okay, okay, she's got six months to live. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the right thing here. And I'm going to actually, um, you know, I'm just going to just go through the motions for the six months and then I'll get on and, you know, start marrying or get with my mistress. So what actually happens is he makes a decision over the next six months that he's going to, you know, try and make life as bearable as he can for his wife, who's only got six months to live. And what actually happens in the movie is that he um, just goes right out of his way, like, you know, compassionate, you know, running around doing everything, um, um, caring like he's never cared before. Um, and what unfolds is that by showing this emotion, he begins to feel this emotion. And what actually happens is he falls in love again. The reason I share this is as I'm talking to you is I'm thinking about what he says. It just didn't feel right. And I think a lot of the times what we do as humans is that we believe our feelings too much. But do you realize that as human beings, we have the ability to cultivate our feelings? And um, gang, I'm hoping that what you get out of this first part of today's Sunday Night Rant is that um, you get what you cultivate. Um, nothing just happens. Um, there's cause and effect. And what happens in this movie is it clearly shows that all of a sudden this person who starts actually, you know, paying attention and caring um, develops those feelings. I've got to tell you, I've got goosebumps even telling you because I'm remembering the story. Uh, but uh, keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is um, the concept of... Um, You've heard me say it before, and that is, I believe that life is suffering. And I know that this comes across as weird from someone who is sometimes perceived to be a trainer, a motivator. Uh, Shane Bowman, big round of applause. He just got married. He's overseas at the moment. One of the great agents from our real estate gym, great, great agents in Australia. Um, so, gang, um, I know that I talk about, you know, having gratitude and life's fantastic and pump, but I also want you to know that I come from a premise that I believe that, you know, life has got a lot of suffering. I mean, there are, and some families have more suffering than others. You know, it's, I, I just can't get over the amount of families that sometimes have double or triple sufferings, right? Um, I share this with you. When you start off from a position that you accept that life is suffering, life is a lot easier to cope with. And the reason why is that whenever you do get punched in the face, you've already factored in that shit's going to happen. Um, I also say to you, because I was reading a great book while I was on holiday, I've read it about 10 times, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meanings, which is about um, when they, uh, uh, the concentration camps um, and all the stuff that was happening back then. And there was a beautiful line that I read in the book, and it was, despair equals suffering minus meaning. So what it says, picture the formula, despair equals suffering minus meaning. And what it means is that Yes, there'll be suffering in life, but when you have meaning, when you work your calling, and Susan's just put it up there on the Facebook comments, when you have meaning in your life, that actually dilutes the suffering to some extent. So it actually makes the despair that you have in life far more bearable. And I'd like to tell you that um, having meaning in your life is what's going to help you overcome, you know, obstacles. Having a purpose bigger than your excuses is going to be so important in your life. Um, 
And, um, and before I move on to the real estate rant, I'm going to share you with something else that happened over the last week. I was talking to some bloody idiot on my holiday that did my head in a few times, right? That did my head in. Hey, Michael Tringali. He's asking me, what's my why? I might cover but what's my why at the end of this rant. I might cover that. So I'm talking to a guy in Hawaii and mate, like this guy did my head in after a while. And he, at one stage, he said this. And mate, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but I got to tell you here, you know, marriage is totally okay between two homosexual men, you know? And I know that Australia recently had the vote on the yes vote and he kept going and going and going, you know? And then he said to me, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't know what to have to say. I, what do I say to my two kids, you know, that two men can actually get married? And I just turned around to the guy and I said, listen here, I don't know what you're going to say to your two kids on why two men that want to get married because they're in love. I don't know what you're going to say to your two kids. But you know what? At the end of the day, guess what? They're not my two kids. They're your kids. So really, it's not my problem. It's your problem if you feel you've got to come up and explain to them why, right? So what's the learning here? What's the learning here? Why worry about things that aren't going to affect you in your life? I mean, the guy's not gay. His kids are not gay. And he's sitting there and he's wasted 30 minutes of my holiday in the sunshine asking me what is he going to tell his two kids about people that are the same sex getting married. I don't fucking know, mate. They're not my kids. You work it out. Anyway, let's move on to real estate. Real estate. Gang, let's move on. Here is eight things that I think are going to have, help you in the next 90 days. The first one is a great real estate lead generator. Go to CoreLogic, RP Data. Here's what you do. Print off properties that you want to approach. And then what you do is they print off and they've got a market valuation, which is generally pretty conservative. What do you do? You write a handwritten note and you can actually drop that in the street for each home that you're approaching and say, CoreLogic RP Data estimates that the value of your home is 1.65 million. Give me a call and I'll tell you that I can get you a lot more than that and I'll give you an idea of what your home is worth today. People love you competing that you are going to get a better figure than what's on that piece of paper because all of a sudden they love the competition. Man, print it off, RP data, get the price and then write, hey, give me a call and I'll tell you what your home's worth in this market and I can pretty much tell you I can get you a figure higher than this. Doof, bang, gold. The next thing I want to help you with over the next three months is this. I'd like to let you know that one of the biggest wasters in real estate is what I call the no-shows. Do you know people that cancel appointment or don't show up at the last minute and it has affected your whole day? The lead magnet's done. I've been doing some bit of coaching with Nick Cooney. I'm pleased to know that he's an executor and he's getting shit done. He's just told me he's done his lead magnet. Lead magnets are critical things in this new connection economy, man. Marketing is about getting noticed. Sales is about closing. You won't be closing unless you get noticed. So, gang, no shows in real estate are a real big problem. So what I suggest you do is this. Call the night before of all your appointments and confirm that they're happening. It will help you organize your diary if they're getting canceled or it will help you reinforce an appointment happening. No shows are something that you can control by calling the night before. Point number three in real estate that I think is going to help you. Have you noticed that when you're about to take a week or two weeks off. Hello, Tanae, Jane, congratulations. 
from India. We're looking forward to you coming back. By the way, Taney Jane got married in India. And when he comes back, Taney Jane is coming around the country with me in and New Zealand, where real estate gym members are going to get a special scripts workshop. Only real estate gym members are invited. I'm sorry. This is part of your real estate gym membership exclusive events. Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, and yes, Auckland with Taney Jane. If you haven't booked in, book in through the real estate gym. Love to see you there. It's $39, correct. There is no cheaper real estate events going on in the market. And by the way, I got abused last week by some, a competitor of mine who turned around and said, why do you actually charge your training at such a low figure? And what was my response? Because I can, I can. Simple as that. Let's move on. Number three, take more breaks. Why? I'll tell you why. Hello, Mike. How are you going? Good to see you. Looking forward to seeing you in New Zealand. Why? Why? I'll tell you why you've got to take more breaks. Have you noticed when you're about to go on break, you get a lot of work done in that last four or five days? That's why it creates a deadline. That's why. Gang. Take it from me. Take more breaks. It creates urgency for you to get shit done. Number four. Number four. You need to have a good capture device. You need to have a good capture device. And for me, hello, George Samios. Good to see you, brother. And George, I've got to let you know, great guy. I'm using his product now called TriCall. All my gym members that get an occasional call coming to their voicemail is coming due to the technology that I use from TriCall. Think about that. I can get through 5,000 calls in an hour with my voice going into people's voicemail. It is the time of automation, gang. That's what's happening in 2018. Anyway, gang, let's move on. Everyone needs to have a capture device. I choose to use Good Notes on my iPad because I use the white um, eye, eye pencil. Everyone needs to have a good capture device. And I'm telling you, if you're not doing it already, the most simple thing to do is to be using Notes. But a step further, the app Good Notes with a pen. Fantastic. Sarah says, automate or die, 100%. Yes, George, I think does cover, no, George does not cover the UK. Stephen Brown, I'll leave that for you to work out. Um, um, next one. So we've gone through four. Number five, number five. Let me give you number five. Number five is, look at your database. Like, I have to tell you, 30 years in this business, 30 years coaching in this business, Real estate, auctioneering, training, being a business owner. I'm going to tell you straight, the number one key performance indicator for success in real estate is very simple. Listen to me. Appointments, appointments, appointments. So one of the things I'd like you to do is to be looking at your database and to ask yourself, if I wanted to get an appointment today, who would I call? Great question. If I wanted to get an appointment today, who would I call? Great question. And Peter Clements, good to see you on there because in Perth, Peter Clements is going to be presenting to my real estate gym members and he has basically won every big award there is in WA in the last 12, 24 months. Looking forward to it. Thank you too, Peter. Uh, gang, Number six, when you're talking to buyers, here's a really great question. I see a lot of homes before they hit the market. Are you interested in me letting you know about anything before it comes on? Great question. I see a lot of homes before they hit the market. 
Are you interested? Number seven, expired listings. I want you to understand expired listings have got the following characteristics. They have got a vendor who has an unmet need. They want to sell. They're in pain. They also have an emotional mindset of a very frustrated person because they're pissed off. They're pissed off because they've gone to all this trouble and their home is not selling. So understand, guys and girls, they're going to be wild when you talk to these people. They're not going to be happy. But I'm going to tell you, there's diamonds amongst, amongst those. And in this marketplace that is no longer having low days on market in many parts of Australia, I'm telling you, expired listings are critical. And Lisa Novak loves using her handwritten note. Go to the real estate gym and have a look at Lisa Novak's handwritten note. It has been so important in her first full year of selling. She's absolutely smashing it from Novak in the Northern Beaches. And I remember when I was at her office and she showed me her handwritten note on how authentic it looked and how strong the results are. The last one, guys and girls. Oh, by the way, with expired listings, everyone needs to have a case study of an expired listing that was with another agent, that you listed it, and it shows that you sold it. You need to have the story. It's the story that sells. People need to know that if they come with you, you've already solved other expired listings problems. So understand, guys and girls, create a case study of an expired listing because this is what's going to engage someone, someone that can see that you've solved a similar problem. And the last thing I'd like you to do, and you're going to watch a video very soon that I did with the Stefan Bertrand from McGrath, who's uh, writes over two million bucks. You need to have a listing presentation in your iPad, and you can use iBooks um, if you want, where you've got all the documents of properties that you've sold previously. The brochure, the agency agreement, the marketing plan, um, open house buyers in there. You've got the whole lot. And what you do is you actually are just showing a client at a listing presentation. Let's go and look at number 53 Smith Street. Let's have a look. There's the brochure. There's the agency agreement. As you can see, 2.75%. Look at the people that came through. These are the people that have came through. Let's go through it. This is the editorial we submitted. Nothing works as effective as you actually showing it, and you can use it on iBooks on your iPad. Those of you that are in the real estate gym, you'll actually see this in the video that we do. Guys and girls, I'm letting you know that Susan Zeng is opening the doors to the real estate gym for 48 hours. If you're not a member, let me remind you, it is $65 a month and $620 a year. And you'll be coming to the events in August and you'll be getting your success journal sent out to you, gang. All that for about two to three coffees per week. Guys and girls, Susan has just pinned it, realestategym.com.au. She has put it on there for 48 hours. Uh, gang, enough said. I want to let you know that this week I'm also speaking at a conference Thursday, Friday in Brisbane called Resi, R-E-S-E dot net dot A-U. Susan, you might, you might, you know, just put that on there. Resi, R-E-S-E dot net dot A-U. I'm the speaker and MC. People that are going to be there, uh, Matt Steinward, uh, Marcus Ciminello. There's a heap of other people. Two days, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Oh, I can't even remember. Alex Porter's going to be there. I've seen the brochure. You've got uh, Dick from uh, um, Deer Creek. Coronas is there. But anyway, all I've been told is that they're allowing me to 
to give a $200 discount to anyone that um, comes to that event Thursday, Friday in Brisbane. And I'm letting you know, I do not get I'm, this thing that I've... Oh, sorry. If you put the word to get the $200 discount, you've got to put the word rant in the promo box if you join. So that's resi.net.au. And I'm giving you my word. There is no affiliate fee. I don't get any of that. All I'm doing is I spoke to them tonight and they said, mate, can you just let them know that you're going to be speaking there? And I'm doing that. But anyway, gang, let's move on. I'm more interested about getting some real estate gym members joining my real estate gym with me for the next 12 months. Gang, realestategym.com.au, end of commercial. Gang, remember, there is no better you than you. And until I see you next week, go out and play big. May your future be bigger than your past. Thank you and God bless you.